Hey guys, so today I'm going to be sharing with you what I think is my biggest and best foundation tip ever. It involves summertime foundation mostly, making your skin look glowy and pretty, um, still having a really flawless look to your skin, but having it look natural, using as little products as possible, because that's the key in the summertime. You don't want to layer a ton of products on your skin that are just going to melt right off. Um, in this video, I'm going to be using the Revlon Color Stay Makeup, the Normal to Dry formula. But I find that the oily skin formula of this looks a little apparent, can look cakey throughout the day, and just does not hold up as well. Um, I think that this one is much more natural finish, holds up just as well on oily skin, though. A lot of people, when summer rolls around, they want to pick more, like, sheer products. And you end up applying that all over your face, and then you end up using more to cover all of the imperfections because the product doesn't have good coverage. When you could just use a product that has really good coverage and use it very sparingly and not use much at all. And the genius of this is that these products that typically have more coverage um, are usually more like color stay formulas anyway that last long, a long time. The last time I talked about this in a video, I think I used the Makeup Forever Matte Level Plus, which is also a really, really good option. You can also use something like the HD, the Makeup Forever, if you have um, more dry skin. It's a little thinner, has a little less coverage. But just anything that has really, really great coverage, um, a more like actual foundation. And it actually looks much more natural, and you use your concealer to actually cover the blemishes rather than using foundation and, you know, actually trying to apply enough foundation to cover all of your blemishes because then you're just going to end up like a big mess. Um, it's going to look like too much. So I'm going to demonstrate all of this in the video. The main idea is just using as little products as possible but using good products in a way that really makes your skin look flawless, natural, um, and it's just great for the summertime because it holds up really well. So if you guys want to see exactly how to do this, then keep watching. So first for this, you can definitely apply a primer. I like to keep the layers and the products as minimal as possible in the summertime, pretty much all the time really, especially when you're going to be hot and sweaty. Um, it just gives a better result if you don't have a ton of things on your face. You can definitely use a primer, like I said, but I like to just kind of keep it all in one. I use this as my moisturizer. It's my SkinMD Natural Shielding Lotion, and it actually really makes your skin feel nice, similar to that of a primer. And I find that I really don't need one. It's just unnecessary. Um, this also comes in an SPF formula, which I need to pick up because I love that stuff. And I'm using my Revlon Color Stay Makeup. This is the Normal to Dry Skin formula. Now, rather than doing it like you would a normal foundation application where you're getting it everywhere, I just apply it to the center areas of my face. Um, if you have especially like a lot of breakouts on your cheeks or wherever, you may just want to apply it there. Just the areas that look discolored. My cheeks look pretty good, so I'm not going to add any extra product there. So then I'm going to take my F84 brush, which is my favorite for foundation. That was a very, very small amount of foundation, as you can see, that's already like blended into that area and just kind of dab and blend around. You can see it's already taken care of most of the discoloration. I haven't even like applied much at all. Whatever's left on the brush, just kind of smooth it around and make sure that everything is blended nicely. It really feels like I'm not wearing anything on my face because I applied so little. But since it's such a great coverage foundation, it really took care of most everything. Foundation should just be to make your skin tone look even, and then for blemishes and everything, use a separate concealer. Just in the spots that need it. And I like to use my MAC Studio Finish. I need to get another one. Um, and then I use this P86 brush by Sigma, which is this tapered one. And then just go around and dab like little any little blemishes. I have a lot of little like red marks that are left over from where I've broken out in the past. So while this larger brush is perfect for like large areas or blemishes or anything like that, if you have anything that's like really small or even like a blemish that's hard to like get the concealer on, this is the best. Use like an EO5 eyeliner br brush. Don't be afraid to use eyeliner brushes or eyeshadow brushes or anything like that for concealer as long as they're clean, obviously. So I've got all my actual like flaws taken care of. What I like to do is to wait and apply my um, under eye concealer last. If you thought that I skipped that, I did not. I will show you in a moment. Next, I like to go on to my setting powder. I like to keep it very sheer. I don't really like to use loose products. I feel like they kind of pile up on your skin and you apply a little bit too much sometimes. Um, I just like a product that's already pressed that just kind of glides on that works um, works really nicely with your skin that has a good finish to it. don't really like any of those translucent powders or anything like that. I'd rather just find a nice sheer natural formula 
that goes with your skin tone. And for me, that is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Medium. And I use a large F30 brush. Um, this really isn't as much as it looks like. I just barely tapped it. Just blot it on the areas where you applied most of the foundation. And then kind of blend it out. Just a little bit on my forehead. This just kind of sets everything, um, especially your concealer. Next, I go on to my under eye concealer. It's the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser for Dark Circles. And I just kind of dab that on. You don't want to get a whole lot of this. It's easy to kind of goop this product on sometimes. Um, but I just like to barely, you know. Um, I do have my eye makeup on now. Usually I do my eye makeup last. For this video, I went ahead and did it first. I use a big brush like this. It's an F86. And I love this for under eye concealer. It's huge. And it... It's kind of weird to think to use something like this for under eye concealer, but it really just blends it in so perfectly. You don't have to use your finger. It doesn't transfer a lot. Like if you use your finger, I feel like sometimes it doesn't really blend it in as well. Next, apply your bronzer. I'm going to do this really quick. I'm going to use the Chanel Bronze Universal. You can apply this before or after your setting powder. It really doesn't matter. Or you can apply, apply it um, directly to your clean skin. To me, that stuff is just really lightweight. It acts much like a powder, and it feels really just like nothing. I don't know. I... To me, it feels a lot lighter than a powder for some reason. I don't know. And for my blush, I'm going to use the Chanel Rose Initial, which I'm really loving lately as well. Just very quickly apply a little bit of that. This has just been kind of my go-to color lately. Any color you want will work. A little color on my lips, I used the um, Chanel Bagatelle. So when you get to the end and you get to the bronzer and everything, you can definitely skip that. Do whatever you're more, most comfortable with. The whole point of this was just sharing with you the foundation tips and stuff. But when you get to this point, if you want, you can apply more of like a highlighting powder. I feel like my skin still doesn't really have much on it. It feels still really clean, very like I've used really sheer products. Um, so I don't mind applying another powder just to kind of give me some like a glow and just a little bit of a sheen to my skin, like a natural sheen. Using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Luminous Light. This one is most um, the closest to my skin tone. I'm just using the same brush that I used for my powder. So you definitely, um, usually for, for highlighter or something, I'll use a smaller brush or something like that where I can just get on top of my cheeks. But that's not really what this product is. If I used it in a lighter shade, it definitely would be. But this one's close to my skin tone, so I can just use a big powder brush and just very lightly dust over my cheeks, just a little on my nose. You can even put a little on your finger and kind of do that. Just very simple. Just adds a little something extra. So I hope that y'all enjoyed it and that this was helpful. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye!